Hi everyone, today I am talking all about foundations, what I have in my stash that I'm trying to finish up and whether or not I plan on repurchasing them. This video idea was not my own, so I'm not gonna take the credit. It was from my sweet friend and supporter, Sarah. So Sarah, thank you so much for the idea. I am happy to fulfill your request and I think it's a great video idea. So before I get started with that, I do want to just tell you guys, thank you so, 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 so much for your sweet, sweet comments and for all your support. I was already glad to be back, but I just felt you guys just like poured the love and really made me realize like even more so how much I miss this and how much I missed the interaction with you guys. You guys are so sweet and so very special to me and I don't take any one of you for granted. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your love and all your support. I truly, truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Mwah. All right, so let's talk about foundations that I have in my stash that I'm trying to move out of my stash and I will tell you the reason for that is because I am trying to condense my foundation collection. I don't need 10 foundations. I don't think anybody needs 10 foundations unless you're a makeup artist and you have that in your kit. That's not the case though. These are all in my personal stash and I am just becoming super, super particular about my foundations and like, do I really love them enough to repurchase them and continue to have them in my stash? So my goal moving forward, just so that you know, is to really just have about maybe three to four foundations on hand, one being drugstore, and then two to three high-end foundations that are like holy grail, I absolutely love, and will always be in my stash as long as they continue to make them. So that's my idea moving forward, and that is why, although some of these foundations are really great, and you're gonna be really surprised by whether I would repurchase them or not, um, it's not that I hate them, it's just that I've become super, super picky, so please keep that in mind, that that's kind of where my frame of mind is coming from when I'm talking about them. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is from L'Oreal. It's the Infallible Pro. And I was really hoping that this foundation would have been the drugstore version of Estee Lauder Double Wear. So I'll tell you the claims really quick and I'm not doing like a formal review on any one of these foundations. I'm gonna give you a really quick rundown. But this is a demi-matte finish. It wears up to 24 hours. It has a medium coverage and an air light texture. So um, I would agree with all of this. I mean, it's, I don't know about a 24 hour wear. Let's be real, I don't, goodness, are you kidding? I can't even stay up 24 hours anymore. It does wear a really long time though, and it does have a demi matte finish to it. The problem that I have with this foundation is the freaking shade range. So this one is in 102 Shell Beige. And I have to mix this shade with another one because if not, I just look so ridiculous. Like it's way too light, but it's not even like the lightest shade. It seems like it's kind of in the middle. So for that reason, I don't know if I'm going to repurchase this one. This one's still up in the air. I might later try like one or two shades up, maybe during the summer and give it another shot. I'm just like, I hate that I have to like mix foundations in order to like get my perfect shade and this one's just way too light for being a shell beige. This foundation also claims to have oil control. I don't know, I've been using it for the last several months and I haven't really been oily, I'm pretty normal right now. So I'm kind of up in the air about this one but I know that many of you love it. So there's that. The next foundation is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte Plus Poreless and this one is for normal to oily skin. So it looks like that. And this one is in the shade 125 Nude Beige. I do really like this foundation. I like it alone and it's a great mixer foundation. So what I mean by that is I will mix it with the L'Oreal Infallible or I will mix it with the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I really love it with my Estee Lauder Double Wear. It gives such a beautiful finish and coverage. I like this, even though I typically prefer like a fuller coverage foundation, this one has like a light medium coverage. So if you're looking for something full coverage or you're trying to cover up like scarring or redness, any type of discoloration, I would say that this probably isn't going to be the one for you. But if you have like something really mild and you're not looking for like full coverage, full face, then this one is a good one. And I do see myself repurchasing this one. 
The next one is the Revlon Colorstay 24 hour foundation in 240 medium beige. So it looks like this. This one is an old school foundation. It's been around for a really long time. And I just don't know that I love this anymore. I used to love it once upon a time. I feel like the lighting's changed. Did it? I hope not, but I think it did. Um, I used to love this once upon a time before like they've made so many new so much more new things i don't know i just like i just don't love it anymore period and i'm not going to repurchase it but i don't know i guess between these two i'd probably go for the l'oreal if i had to recommend like a long wear foundation from the drugstore i'd probably recommend this one over this one all right so next up we have a sephora 10 hour wear perfection foundation this one i heard about through another makeup artist he said he keeps it in his kit for all his clients and so that's why I was initially really intrigued about this one. It has a really good price point and it has some really nice claims to it. So it says medium coverage, buildable, dermatologist tested, non-comedogenic, paraben free, fragrance free, formulated without mineral oil. So it has like all these like ding, 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 right? Kind of things that make you think like, oh, that sounds like the perfect foundation. It does have a really nice pump to it as well. I'm gonna keep playing with this one. I don't know that I'm like in love with it, but I also haven't worn it in probably a couple of months. So I don't wanna like sit here and lie to you and like bash this foundation or makeup things. I really don't remember. Like I remember it being okay, but I also remember like it didn't wow me. So I don't know, it could have been the tool that I was using as well because you know sometimes foundations and the finish and coverage will vary whether you're applying the foundation with your fingers, a beauty sponge, or a makeup brush. So I'm going to give this one another shot to be fair and try it with all three tools. Probably not my fingers, that's, that's a lie because I just don't prefer to use my fingers anymore. Maybe I will and just get over myself. But yeah, so I'm kind of like up in the air because I just don't remember it wowing me, but I don't want to bash it. So I don't know, we'll find out. I'll keep you posted, maybe like on Snapchat or Instagram or something. All right, the next one is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Redness. The whole like lettering, whatever it's called has come off. I don't know what shade this is in because that also came off, but it is a twist cap and it is a mousse whipped type of formulation. And this one, if you're looking for something, if you have like redness, rosacea, like serious um, discoloration on your skin and you're looking for full coverage, this one's a really, really good one. I'm just not too thrilled about the packaging, but I do really like the coverage. I just don't care for like the way that I have to take it out. It's just kind of a little bit messy. So again, I'm just being really, really picky. Keep that in mind. But I do think it's a really good foundation. So I think, again, if you're looking for something full coverage and you need to cover a lot, especially discoloration, this one's gonna be the way to go. The last one that I have to share with you is the MAC Pro Longwear Foundation. And I am like, okay, I have a love-hate relationship with MAC foundations. This is why. Keep in mind, I have the type of skin that I have to be careful with what I use because I do have more on the sensitive type skin where certain products will break me out, not just MAC, but any brand. Kind of like unfortunate, but it's a good thing because as I'm trying like new products, I risk the chance of breaking out and those breakouts are really painful. They're almost cystic and they just like, it really, really hurts to wash your face, to apply foundation. Um, they're just painful and they're not fun at all. So that's like the bad side. The good side is, and this is like a whole other conversation, but the good side is to that, that when I find foundations and if they work for me, I know that they will work on any other, mostly any other type of my client, unless they have like a specific ingredient allergy is what I'm trying to say. I don't even know what the heck I'm trying to say because I'm hungry. So anyway, um, my love-hate relationship with this MAC Pro Longwear and even the, um, the Studio Fix Foundation is that I really, really do like the finish and the coverage of these, but I think that they're breaking me out. And so I'm wearing this today. I mixed it with the Infallible Pro because this is too dark for me and this one's too light, so they've come together and come on my face with like a little baby shade. Um, so I'm like hoping, crossing my fingers that I don't break out, even though like it's a mix. I'm just, oh God, cause I just cleared up my breakouts. 
So I really, really, really don't want to break out again. So I don't know, like I have a love-hate relationship. I would say like if you don't have sensitive skin or you're not prone to breakouts, give this a shot because it is really good. It comes with a nice pump. It's a beautiful finish, long wear foundation, great coverage. But I would say if you're more on the sensitive side of your skin and you know prone to breakouts, then I would say skip this. So um, that is pretty much it. That's the rundown of my foundations and my stash right now that I'm trying to finish up. I do have a few other foundations that I like that I'm not in a rush to finish up. But for now, I just wanted to fulfill the request of foundations that I'm trying to finish up and whether or not I will repurchase them. I hope that you found this video helpful. If any of you have any of these foundations and you wanna share your experience with us, whether you like it, don't like it, what you like or what you don't love about it, please leave that down below in the comment section because that is so helpful to the rest of us. I'm not just here for you, but you guys are here for me and for everybody else. We're all learning from each other and just sharing our experience with each other. And that's the great thing about this community. So if you are on Instagram, Snapchat, and Periscope, please be sure to look for me. Please leave your request down below because I would love to read what you guys are wanting to see and which types of videos I can fulfill for you. So leave your recommendations, your suggestions, and your requests down below. Everything that I'm wearing on my face, what's on my nails, all that good stuff is always down below in the description box. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you very soon.